this is more evidence from for the reality of Jesus Christ. This is more evidence that Jesus Christ just might be real. And I'm not giving you hearsay evidence. I'm giving you evidence I heard firsthand from two stories. The first involves Thurston Carlisle. Now, he was saved at our church, Faith Fuel Baptist Church in Lenore County. About a mile and a half, two miles from the Kinston Regional Jet Port. And then this church was a country church. The pastor was Brother Bo Dunford. The deacons were Charles Johnson, Ray Smith, and what was it? What was the other name? Oh, what was the other name? Something Jernigan. Anyways, Thurston Carlisle, in 1986, we were in the prayer room, and he was telling us about how he had gotten saved in this church. A year before 1986, which is 1985, he become he began coming to that church. He says he felt the Holy Spirit trying to draw him to go up to the altar, trying to pull him up, pull him up to the altar to get saved. But he did not want to do that. You see, because getting saved is painful. Getting saved is agonizing. You got to get some. You got to give something up of yourself. You got to give yourself. You got to die to yourself, and it's painful as hell. Let me tell you something. Getting saved is not a pleasant thing to have to do. It's agonizing. Once you do it, you're so glad you did it. But he kept refusing Sunday after Sunday to go up the altar, to the altar and get saved. One Sunday he did this. He keep in mind he was telling the, he 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 was telling us his testimony in the prayer room, the men's prayer room, crystal clear. I think it was the summer of 1986. And he said he went home after refusing to get saved that Sunday morning. He felt something happening within him saying, if you don't get you're one more chance, you got one more chance to do this. And if you don't, you, you don't get saved, you're never going to get saved. One more chance. One more chance. That kid, that that those three words, one more chance, kept ringing in his mind. One more chance, one more chance. That Sunday afternoon, as he was watching the football game, he said he'd see uh, one of the football players on the field, and they would look, and they they started to look like a one, one more, one football player, one more chance, one more chance, one more chance. This kept happening to him. He'd see a lone football player on the field. One more chance. One more chance. That football player started looking like a one. One more chance. One more chance. Well, that afternoon he was driving. He had, he had no intention of coming back to this church. But somehow, he did not know how. He found himself pulling up in this, in this church's driveway. And finally, that night he got saved. One more chance, one more chance. He would have died had he not gotten saved. And this takes you back to the story of my Uncle Mark. Now, my Uncle Mark was a hard man. He was a bad man. He had fought all his life. He went, he, he had, his my grandparents had to put him in the boys' home when he was young because he was too hard to manage. He would later tell me uh, on, a, uh, on a second day at that boy's home, he had uh, he had gotten into six fights and won them all, beat them all. But they were tough, but he had beat them all. He used to he used to love to drink. He even dabbled in marijuana, and he one time he even led the. Howard, Howard Patrol, they were chasing, he had a fast car, they were chasing him, and he outran him, and he turned back around, and came back towards them, speeding towards them, and ran him off the road. He told us the story, he was the Huger kid, and it was in the papers, but they didn't know who he was, but he said, that was me. 
But we had, uh, beginning in 1985, our family started inviting him to church, trying to talk to him about Jesus. But he wasn't having it. He he came over to our house, my house at 1410 Farnet Road one afternoon, and they were trying to talk. And my Didi was there, my Didi, my mom, and my and my dad, my me and my brother, and they were, we were talking about heaven. And he he uh, they they were reading out of Revelation how big the city was. Uncle Mark said Uncle Mark was arguing heatedly. There's no way all the people who are all the people in the world can fit in the city that small. It can't be true. It's not true. He he was a hard nut to crack. And his wife, Aunt Judy, mm, she had a darkness about here back then. A darkness. There was something about Uncle Mark and Aunt Judy that was dark. Foreboding. And Judy was Judy didn't Judy uh, Aunt Judy didn't take no shit. You got, on, you got on the wrong side. You had an enemy. And Mark would fight. Mark, Mark was so mean. The, the kids uh, were bullying his his only son, Michael Claiborne. Michael Claiborne made them start calling him master whenever they came around. And they did. They, 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 he made them. He made a lot of... Kids in the trailer park started calling him master. <laughs> 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 oh, I get so excited when I bite my I had to bite my hand sometimes. Well one day, June the eighth, nineteen eighty seven. Philip, the preacher preacher named Philip, now he did, he had been trying to talk to Uncle Mark for some time too. Went over to this trailer. Mark and Judy were there, and Michael, he, he must have been there. Michael was uh, about five years younger than me. I was 14, so he was probably uh, nine years old. Eight years, I don't know. Eight, year, eight years old. And Philip talked with them. Well, that night, June the 18th, my daddy was fixing to go to work at, at the post office. My cousin Paul had come over and uh, spent the night. Me and him were playing gin rummy. The phone rang. Oh, also, the pastor, Bo Dunford, and my dad had tried to talk to Mark many times. Bo Dunford uh, told Mark, you don't even have to come up. You can get saved in your pre pew. Just ask, just ask Jesus for, to forgive you and save you. But Mark was not having any, any of that. But I, I picked up, I answered the phone. That night of June the 8th, 1987, it was Uncle Mark, Is and he asked me, is your dad and Bo there? I knew that if he was asking for the preacher, something was going down. So I told dad, and dad dropped everything he was doing. He went to go, he, he dropped, instead of going to work, he went to the pastor's, he called Bo, and they met up, they went to Uncle Mark's trailer, and both him and Judy got saved. Uh, they were talking to Mark and not paying much attention to Judy, but when Uncle Mark, uh, Uncle Mark, Uncle Mark said to Dad, Dad, but you don't understand, you don't know how bad some of the things I've done in my life. And Dad said, God will forgive you. Just that, God will forgive you. No, no matter what you've done, God will forgive you. And finally, when he was ready to make the decision, they looked at Judy and said, why do you join in and make this a twosome? And she burst into tears and started crying. And they, they, they both got saved. And, oh, Aunt Judy became a wonderful person. And Uncle Mark, he used to have an evil laugh. <laughs> that would chill your bones. But after he got saved, whenever he laughed, that same laugh is a be suddenly a beautiful laugh. But Uncle Mark was telling us what had happened. Why he had why he had gotten saved? He's like Philip had come to talk to me that night. I'm just listening, but I didn't pay it much mind. And when he left, all of a sudden something came out. Something came over me: a terror, a fear that I was gonna die that night. It, the devil was gonna get me that night. If I didn't got if I did not get saved that night, the devil was gonna kill me. 
And he he asked himself, "What is this? Why am I why why am I feeling this?" He was terrified, terrified. He knew he was gonna die. One more chance, one more chance. So that is why he called my dad and asked for my dad and Pastor Bo. Now, atheist, if Christianity is not true, how come this is the only religion where stuff like this this happens? There is nobody ever been converted to Ju uh, Judaism, Mormonism, Catholicism, Voodoo, Hinduism, like this. Nobody. Nobody has been warned by an inner voice. You are going to die if you, go, if you don't convert. So if Jesus is not real, what's happening? Jesus is real. Jesus is Lord. And one day you're going to have to face him. <laughs>